Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found... From the studios of Blackwater Media in the city of Atlanta, it is time for another episode of the Shadowland Radio Show. I'm your host, Dr. William Lester, and I am joined by my co-host, the lovely, beautiful, talented Miss Cynthia Maria Ivy. Hello, Cynthia. Hi. I'm very glad to have you. Now, uh, this is kind of a new show, show format. I've never really had a co-host for the Shadowland Radio Show, but... Uh, we're we're moving forward this way, and I think it's going to f- be fantastic. I think the responses to our last two shows were remarkable. Now, Cynthia Ivy, of course, is the founder of Harmonic Light Healing Arts, and so before we get off into the real meat of the show, I wanted to give her just uh, a few seconds to tell the listeners about that. Hi, yes. Um, So my name is Cynthia Maria Ivy, and I am the founder of Harmonic Light Healing Arts. I am a shamanic practitioner, and I'm a certified energetic life and spiritual coach. I'm also a double Reiki master. I also am an astrologer. Um, I know a variety of energetic healing modalities, and um, so um, please check out my website or my Facebook page. Later on, or as we get towards the closing of the show, we'll uh, let everybody know how to get over to her uh, website, and she's got a great Facebook page, and how to get in contact with her, and uh, just tell you how you can avail yourself of of her knowledge and skills. I want to also tell everybody that you can listen to the show on the Blackwater Media Facebook page, on the Blackwater Media YouTube channel, on the Facebook page of the American Institute of Metaphysics, as well as Google+. And also, as we got started to prep for the show, uh, we had some thunder clapping outside and everything, so hopefully uh, that will continue and add to the atmosphere. So when you hear that, it's not a sound effect, it's real thunder. Um, we, uh, We did a couple of shows already about uh, talking about dark entities, uh, demonic influence, demonic uh, oppression, and just that whole uh, gamut of material. And we're going to kind of continue today because as you and I have talked, we have discovered that, well, we both had a lot of strange encounters with these type of things. And what we decided to do, because we talked about it a lot, We're going to do something that you don't often see done on a lot of shows. We're going to get into some very deep, some very personal, and up until this point, some very private uh, issues connected with encounters with some of these dark, sinister forces. And I think, or I hope, that the listeners will be able to take some of that uh, and take it and ingest it and give it uh, food for thought. And you don't see people doing this very often, and I thought it would make for a great show. So everybody kind of strap in. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a fascinating experience. So I'm going to let Cynthia really talk to the audience <clears throat> about some of her experience. And now these, these things now, some of these things are going to go back decades so, uh, Cynthia, why don't you start off and tell us some of your experiences and, you know, what it's meant for you. And so, go. Okay. Well, um, I, I want to start out by saying that I have, although I've had a lot of uh, bad or um, evil um, uh, paranormal experiences in my life, I've also had a lot of very good very beautiful um, spiritual paranormal experiences in my life as well. But tonight we are going to focus 
on the negative entities that I have um, dealt with throughout my life. And it has been throughout my whole life. I don't remember not having these kinds of experiences. Um, in childhood, it started more with um, hearing and seeing things um, that were just disturbing. Um, mainly for me, it was dolls and stuffed animals that um, I could see their eyes following me. I could see that they s slightly moved position. I felt um, a negative energy coming from them. Um, and this happened to the point that I didn't want dolls or stuffed animals. And everyone who knew me as a child knows that. I didn't want them. I would find various ways to get rid of them. People would keep giving them to me for Christmas and my birthday. And I just, you know, because they would say, wow, Cynthia doesn't have a doll. <laughs> we need to get her one. And um, so um, th that, that was very uh, pervasive in my early childhood. Also in the house that I lived in, there was a an entity that I could see in here. Um, it was basically a a midget. We're talking, this is the midgets doing that. Wait a minute. Now you and you and I have talked about this midget. So yeah, share this with the audience. Yes. So there was this midget. It was a, a man and um, a kind of an unusual uh, with unusual body proportions. So not entirely human looking, but close um wait, wait a minute cynthia okay because i i, I want to i want people i want to paint a picture for people because we all know what a midget is but to the best of your memory give the listeners a physical description of what you saw okay he was probably about three feet tall but he was all one size like a rectangle his head was as wide as his shoulders and kind of square. So not proportional. So, yeah. And, and, but again, very human like, but obviously not, not like any human I'd ever seen, whether they were a small person or not. I, 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 I never saw anyone like that. But he would float around the room and laugh at me and threaten me, but he never actually hurt me. But of course, he terrified me and I felt that he was going to hurt me at any moment. And as a child, when I told people about the stuffed animals, the dolls, the midget, and other things, no one believed me. It was a bad dream. It was my imagination. I was making it up. So I learned very early on not to tell people um, what was going on with me, no matter how horrifying it was. What I would do is just run to someone and say, I'm scared, and um, probably not tell them what, why. Um, so with but with the particular midget story, what's interesting about that was many years later, um, another relative of mine was living in that room. And as a, she was a young child, um, one day when I was over there, I found out how terrified she was to go to sleep at night. And I asked what was going on. And she told me that there was a midget in the room who was scaring her. And that Although I knew my experience was real, having that extra level of validation horrified me further, and I knew that she was telling the truth. And then I talked to another relative who had lived in that room before me, and uh, that house was in our family for many years. I just spoke to another female relative, and I asked her, did you have any scary experiences in that room? And she said yes, that there was a midget that used to float around and threaten her and scare her. So three of us had seen this thing throughout our lives without telling anyone about it. And um, so to me, that's all the proof I need. And um, but anyway, so this, these kinds of things continued on for me, even into um, junior high, which I guess I'm about, you know, 11, 12 years old. Um, I continued seeing even more and more, hearing more and more, um, uh, continuing with the stuffed animals um, and and other things, hearing s scratching voices. Um, 
I, I, I could, I started seeing even more variety of things in my peripheral vision. And um, also just around, like, at the, at the edge of a doorway or at the end of the hall in the dark, it was, you know, these things were always somewhat hidden. Um, and there were times when, for example, um, I was babysitting uh, one of my younger cousins. I heard something swirling around and these doors literally f- flew open and slammed against the walls f- f- for, n- for no reason. So these kinds of things continued happening. And then into high school, um, even more so, um, hearing more, seeing more, seeing a wider variety, um, hearing footsteps up and down the hall almost every night, even seeing a, a very obviously stereotypical demonic entity, you know, about seven feet tall with the horse legs and the horns, just walk through the door that was closed of my bedroom and walk into my room and stand next to my bed. Um, of course, all of this is extremely horrifying. Um, and again, I wasn't really telling anyone, but I wasn't sleeping well. Um, my mother did take me to see a a woman who, um, looking back, she was either a curandera or a shaman. And she... Now, but tell everybody what that is, the curandera in the, in the, in the Mexican tradition. Um, a curandera or curandero, a man or a woman who is... Um, has a, a special gift. They're um, a healer, but it's it's beyond regular medical type of healing. It's um, spiritual, energetic. Um, they have intuitive capabilities to r- understand you and what you may need, and they use you know a variety of things such as um, incense, plants, um, r- religious icons, and items. Um, and, and give you advice as well, uh, different things to do. So I, I saw this woman. She believed me. She did quite a few things for me. The main thing she did was she gave me a crucifix and some holy water. She asked me if I had a rosary. I, I already had one. I was raised Catholic. Um, she told me to use those things and to pray to Jesus whenever these things would happen. However, at the time, I was already... At that, at the time, I believed I was an atheist because these things had been happening to me my whole life. It was hard for me to believe that God existed. Um, so I didn't understand really what she was telling me. Um, if she had explained to me, whether you believe in these things or not, use them anyway, because these will help you. I don't recall her saying that. Otherwise, I probably would have used them. So I didn't use them because, again, at the time, I... I was an atheist, or what I thought an atheist was. Um, So things continued to happen, and by the time I was 19, 20, 21, things were far worse. Um, Very, very bad. Um, Not only was I seeing and hearing, I was also feeling things. Um, Things touching me, um, things around me, things. <laughs> I, know, well, look, look, I know because, it, it, you know, you're, you're, you're remembering all this and, mm-hmm. it, and it can't make you emotional. It yes. can't make you upset. But if you notice mm-hmm. the actual contact or these encounters have escalated. Yes. Now, now there's a lot of physical. Mm-hmm. You saw the midget thing and you saw the other thing with the horns and these other things. And they just kind of scared you, but they didn't really physically interact with you right. now you're in a situation where things are physically interacting with you so there is an escalation as you as you're getting older here so yes tell us about that um it was to the point where uh, also it wasn't just one thing at a time there were there would be many what seemed to be demons or devils around me uh and of course it was worse far worse at night, Um, although sometimes I had daytime experiences as well. But it was so bad that I preferred to sleep on a couch because on the couch with the, you know, 90 degree angle, it it cut down on the amount of space where they could be around me. If I was laying down on the bed, there was 180 degrees. They could be on my right side, on my left side, and on top of me. So I would sleep on the couch to, um, you know, have less space for them to be. And I, I would feel them 
in right in my face, uh, within inches from my face, breathing on me. I could hear them growling. Um, they weren't completely manifested. They were kind of, you know, ghost-like. I could see through them, but I could still see them. Um, I, I had uh, one, I, and, and not only was I having these kind of more paranormal type of experiences, I was also having very tangible, real experiences. And, and one of those was, uh, and I'll try to tell it briefly, but I... I was asleep and um, dreaming, and in my dream, my neck started to hurt. So I put my hand on my neck, and I felt something very big, almost the size of a, a, a softball, or maybe a tennis ball is better, a uh, tennis ball size on my throat, and I grabbed it and threw it, and I realized at this point I was awake, and my throat was really hurting, it was dark. I put my hand on my throat and felt it felt wet and very painful. So I started to realize, and this all happened within a matter of seconds, but I started realizing I had that dream. I felt something on my neck. I threw it, and I remembered hearing something hit the wall. So I jumped up and turned on the light, and I was near the mirror. I looked into the mirror, and there was blood just literally pouring down my throat, my neck, my chest, I looked around the room and there was a giant beetle, one I've, I've never seen anything like it before or since, um, at least four inches long, more than an inch fat, dark brown. Um, it was on its back on the floor with its, you know, moving its legs around, but it had these long horrifyingly uh, looking um, pinchers that looked like claws. And I looked in the mirror again. It had slit my throat open, um, perfectly horizontal, perfectly in the middle of my throat. And I was bleeding quite a bit. Um, How this thing even got in the house I don't know how it got in my room with the door closed. I don't know how it got on me and got directly on to my throat, the center of my throat, and just sliced it open. I don't know. Um, I had a very bad feeling about it. I felt like it wasn't even of this world, although it was tangible, and I was able to show it to other people because I, I couldn't kill it. I was afraid to even touch it or go near it. I put a big, heavy glass over it. Um... And so I won't go into the rest of the story. There's more to it. But I had experiences like that as well that were seemed, although it was real and tangible, seemed very paranormal to me as well. And then around the time I was 22 or 23 years old, these things just kind of stopped happening. Um, not altogether. I would continue to have a, an unusual experience maybe once a year, maybe once every two years. But I wasn't having these experiences anymore. And, um, but every now and then I would have something very unusual happen. For example, I did mention one of those experiences in our our last interview with my cousin in in Mexico. Um, I also had another experience one day in my room where I just noticed a dark cloud was forming in um, the upper part of my room, in the ceiling area of my room. A dark Mm -hmm. cloud, like you would see outside, started forming inside. It was swirling around, and I was looking at it in disbelief, and I heard a man's voice say, you will know the devil has arrived when dark clouds appear. Mm -hmm. And I jumped up, ran out of my room. But again didn't have another experience like that for maybe another year. Um, I had an experience with an, what looked like a kind of a, maybe an old woman from the old West, um, stand at the foot of my bed, reaching out towards me, asking me to go with her. I had a very bad feeling about her. And then something appeared in my room that scared her very badly to the point, you know, I could see the fear on her face, and she backed up and disappeared. I looked for what she was looking at. There was nothing there. 
I kind of felt like some positive entity helped me at that point. Mm-hmm. So I I continued to have then have to have these things occasionally and you know somewhat ignored them because it wasn't like it used to be when I was younger but from the time I was about 20 um until I was a, about 50 throughout that time and and even before then I had already been learning a lot about shamanism um energetic practices um spirituality and and things like that but from the time I was about 20 till I was 50 I read everything I could get my hands on. I talked to everyone I could possibly talk to. I went to lectures and um, I just did everything I could to educate myself on every aspect of shamanism, spirituality, and energetic work. And so I I learned quite a lot. Um, And then... But keep in mind, this is also, this is a family thing with you because you, like you said in the other show, your cousin is a shaman. Yes. So... He, yes. And I've spent a lot of time with him throughout my life. I've learned a lot um, from him and and, um, other shamans um, and uh, spiritual people as well. So yes, it's it's something that's been in my family. Um, my great grandmother also was a curandera. Um, so around the time I turned fifty, that was in twenty fourteen. I had, and I think we'll we will talk about this in a, in another interview. I had some other experiences, paranormal experiences, and. Um, I became very intuitive and very psychic that year, 2014, when I turned 50. And I became able to see these negative entities much better than I ever had before. Um, And I saw that they were everywhere. And they were on me as well. Not They weren't just in other places or on other people. They were on me. And I, at this point, though... I had tools, I had information and knowledge, and I began fighting them off in ways that I never was able to before. Before, all I did was just, you know, pray or try to hide or run away or or something. Now I knew, I knew the tools, I, I, um, I started fighting them off and it would work, but they would keep coming back, (laughs) you know. Um, But every time they did show up, I, I would remove them but they'd be right back sometimes within minutes within hours within days and and then it did get to a point where they left and i thought wow okay great you know i've 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 fought these off and these were kind of lower level negative entities that were feeding off of my my fear and um sadness um and so they left and then um and then i i met you uh oh <laughs> and um and I fell in love with you. Oh no. And these negative entities came back with a vengeance. And it started with lower level entities not just being around me uh feeding off of me but coming to me and manifesting um more physically. And also tell 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 the people about the painting because this was something that was very personal because like when we met, I, you know, one of the things that I, I was like really excited to show you like some of my artwork and I and I, I remember sending you examples of hey here's one of my paintings mm-hmm. and this and because we were just really getting to know each other mm-hmm. and it was something that was used as a means to kind of create this fear in you. Right. And uh and and you you were able to fight that off and shrug that off and and because I think I you knew what was going on, I think. Yes, I, not at the very first second because when I opened the messages that had the pictures of the of your paintings, I immediately saw demonic faces and figures moving around in them and I thought that was a bad sign about you but I very quickly realized you know what that's not what this is 
these are the negative entities. This is what they do. Um, they saw that I that I was moving to a place of joy and love and happiness and were trying to hold me back in the place that they had kept me my whole life. So I, I, I talked to you about it and, um, you know, I knew that's what it was and, and it stopped happening. That did stop happening. Um, but then they started coming to me, um, while I was asleep at night. I, and so I would feel, I would be asleep and I would feel something on me and it, it felt like it was something of a sexual nature, um, but it wasn't sex in the way we normal humans um, experience it. Um, but they were on me. Um, I could feel the movement. Um, when they would be on me, it would be the upper part of my body and then about two feet above my head was the area that they would occupy around me. Um, so I felt like my heart, my, my throat and my, my head were what they were really sucking energy from more than anything. Uh, they would wake me up at night. I could see them, feel them, hear them, and I would get rid of them, but they kept coming back just over and over and over. And, um, you and I talked about this and I, realized what they were doing was trying to scare me, um, keep me away from you and keep me from going to a place where I would be happy and, and have a, a life of love. Um, instead of the kind of life that I had had really most of my life, I had a lot of bad luck. Um, and I felt like they were able to feed off of my fear and sadness for the previous 50 years. So, um, and, and we can tell them also because, you know, um, these entities, and, and this, is, this is in many of the case files and, and many of the researchers will, will tell you, um, from time to time, these type of entities will attempt to mimic uh, people. They will, they will try to take the form of somebody that, you know, almost like a doppelganger effect. And unless you know certain things, you can be fooled. And, and so we're going to reveal in this show one of the key things I was already aware of. But once you and I talked and you kind of said, well, here's what happened. Here's what happened. And, and you know, we kind of f fleshed out. Well, let me tell you, here's the flaw. One of the things when these uh, inhuman entities attempt to mimic the human form. There's always a flaw. They're not allowed to perfectly replicate the human form. There's always a flaw that you can look for to see that it's not that person that they're trying to duplicate and trick you. There's, there's always something that they can't quite get right. And I guess it's one of those cosmic laws that keeps them from 100% tricking us. So, and, and this actually manifested itself in, in your experiences. So tell them about that. Right. So, you know, up, up to that point, there were these other, what I thought were lower level entities waking me up. Um, oh, yes, they were terrifying. Um, but anyway, so um, that... I, I was able to remove them every night. And then it, I, I think it got to the point in our relationship where we really were realizing we we're going to spend, you know, our lives together. We need to start figuring out how to do that. And so the neg this negative entity or en entities became uh, even more aggressive. So then it started appearing to me in a much more manifested form and it tried to look like you. Um, and I knew, well, because of the fact that I was asleep, like, for example, the, the very first night I was asleep and it woke me up. And again, it was of a sexual nature. Um, I, I did think it was you at first, even though you're in Georgia and I'm in Texas. Um, I thought it was you at first because I was asleep and it kind of looked like you. Um, it w however, I 
pretty quickly realized it wasn't you because it was much smaller. It didn't have any hair. Um, it didn't have any of the kind of, um, I guess, imperfections that most pe people have. It was way too slick and soft. Um, it also wouldn't look at me or talk to me. Um, it seemed to not really have eyes or a mouth, even though it kind of did. But it was very physically... I mean, I'm not slick and soft. And... <laughs> 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 you know, you have fingernails. Yes. You have, um, you know, maybe a sharp elbow or, yeah. you know. Um, so, um, anyway, I lost my you, train of thought. So, uh, it, it, but you could say, but it, you, you, I, I, I it rather, I rather quickly realized it wasn't you. I was kind of describing what it, what it did look like, though. Was um, it, 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 it was horrifying looking because it looked somewhat human, but not quite. And I, of course, was probably maybe the most terrifying moment of my life um, to wake up with that creature in my bed on top of me, and. Um, also, the other thing is I was barely able to move. It wasn't quite sleep paralysis, but it was very similar. I almost couldn't move and I couldn't speak. So it was very hard for me to defend myself, even though having learned everything that I had learned, I knew what I needed to do, but I couldn't do it. So um, I did start trying to pray the Our Father. Mm -hmm. And as I did that, it it kind of, it, it, it vanished. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this continued for, you know, night after night after night. And I, every night would, you know, call you and talk to you until I would fall asleep. The thing would visit me. I would do my best to fight it off. And then I would call you again and then, you know, fall back asleep. Finally, um, there, there is probably a lot I could say about this story. I got um, crosses, crucifixes, holy water, rosaries, um, crystals. I did a lot of smudging. I did a lot of energetic work, especially around my bed, but around the whole house and the yard. Um, before, every night before I went to sleep, I made the sign of the cross on me with holy water. I prayed. I was raised Catholic. I did a variety of Catholic prayers, um, mainly the Our Father. Um, so one night, um, I was, you know, sleep deprived, too, which makes things much worse. Um, this final night, um, well, the, I'll start maybe with the second to the last night. Um, one night it came to me, did the same thing. I somehow summoned the strength to 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 um, pull out my crucifix and hold it to its face, and it re it morphed into a more demonic looking creature, very horrifying. It also sc screamed. You would have thought I was torturing it by holding the crucifix it to its face. Its nature at that point. It it did. And it um seemed to run away. Um so then the the next night it happened again. Um that night I was able to summon even more strength somehow and it was again on top of me again tr trying to do the same thing trying to look like you, I, uh, for some reason, had much more strength and was able to just summon up a huge amount of strength. I told it, um, I, 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 I started, um, I, I got my crucifix. I, uh, wow, well, it's, 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 um, it's, it's really a, a lot to remember. Right yes, now. it is very much so. Um, and it's hard to remember every single detail, but I know I, 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 I remember feeling it and holding it with my hands because I pulled it off of me. And it's amazing how much stronger I was than it. Once I was able to summon my my regular human strength, I was actually stronger than this thing. Um, pulling it off of me, um, I said, um, 
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Father who art and I started praying again, and it rolled off of me onto the side of me, and it was kind of writhing in pain and screaming, and it had also morphed into this demonic-looking creature. I continued to uh, pray, and then I realized what I needed to say. I'd never thought in my life I would say this, um, but I... I did. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you out and back to where you came from. And when I said that, this thing almost, the way it arched its back and screamed and opened that mouth with those crazy teeth, um, you would really think I was torturing this thing with the, 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 just the most... Uh, it was literally the tortures of the damned. Yes. And and, and I, 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 I... I Wow. There's that... See, now, ladies and gentlemen, that was not... That was not uh, some sound effect that I pulled off of, you know, YouTube or whatever. That was an actual thunderclap. Yes. Uh, so, and doesn't that make this story that much more creepy? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I think the universe agrees with me, though. It's, it's a very powerful thing to do. Um, I, I I repeated ag- again, um, and I remembered, you know, a sequence of three uh, works v- better against these things. I said it again, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you out and back to where you came from. And it rolled off my bed onto the floor, writhing and screaming. And I, I you know, I, I'm in shock i'm terrified i'm i'm in disbelief and i said it one more time and i said it with every ounce of my being and holding the crucifix to its face i said in the name of jesus christ i cast you out and back to where you came from and it started to shrivel up very quickly um it actually turned into a kind of like a smoky mist its growl turned into almost a squeak and it was gone. And when it was gone, I actually felt relief. I felt very strong, very powerful. I felt very clean. I felt like a huge weight had been taken off my shoulders. And I felt like that was proof that it was gone. All of those other nights, throughout the previous 50 years of my life, I never felt that sense of release before like I did that night and since then it hasn't come back and um, I I feel like I learned a very great lesson of the, the power that, that I have and that my faith has wow so you know, that just I, I was very excited to uh, have Cynthia share these these personal stories and as you've heard, you know, you very seldom get to hear about experiences and encounters uh, at a level of, of this personal uh, nature. And, you know, we've talked about these things between ourselves and just, you know, I'm, I'm glad you agreed that, you know, you thought it would make a great show. So, you know, what I want to do now is and, and, and believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, you know, when she talked about, you know, earlier, uh, she talked about the the uh, the, the midget phantom thing. Uh, believe it or not, in another show, there's a connection uh, to uh, that that encounter that, that I, I want her to talk about. Uh, something uh, in her uh, experience that uh, is called the midget mansion, mansion. and. Uh, that's more of a that's more of kind of like a, a a crazy creepy fun thing, but it is kind of a, a peripherally connected, and so I'm going to get her to talk about that. And you know, I know we've been kind of like teasing it, but you know, we we still have to talk about UFOs because there's some great UFO things that that we have to say. And Cynthia too has some insane UFO encounters that I want her to share with you, but. At the top of the show, we talked about how, of course, you know, Cynthia is the founder of Harmonic Light Healing Arts. She's got a Facebook page of the same name. She's got a website. So uh, let's get you to tell people how to get in touch with you and go. 
Okay, yes. So um, I have a website and Facebook page. Both go by the name Harmonic Light Healing Arts. The website is a dot com. Um, I have a 1-800 number, 1-800-965-8504. Like I said, I I am a shamanic practitioner, and um, one one of the things that in in the world of shamanism that um, people understand is that generally a a shaman or um, an energetic worker of that level is someone who has fallen into the power of demons and was able to pull themselves back out. And I feel like with my level of experience and and knowledge and education um that I um I've I've become a a very good um shamanic practitioner and energy worker. So please are. feel free to give me a call. I have a 20 minute um free session if you have any questions. Um and yeah, I, w- I would love to talk to you or um, provide any kind of assistance on a you know variety of, of subjects. Absolutely. And also, um, I want to tell you that the show is also connected with the American Institute of Metaphysics. It is a, a, a very unique organization, a very unique educational body uh, with a series of online and home study courses and curriculum uh i guess unheralded unprecedented anywhere in the world you can see that at american institute of metaphysics.com i want to remind you guys that you can listen to the shadowland radio show on the blackwater media youtube channel the blackwater media facebook page also the american institute of metaphysics uh, Facebook page and occasionally you know when we remember to post it correctly uh, the Harmonic Light and Healing Arts Facebook page <laughs> but uh, yeah we are going to we're going we're to talk about Midget Mansion in an upcoming show and, so, and we have to have the UFO talk and we're going to talk about a million things but uh, I'm really excited to have Cynthia now as the co-host the co-hostess because she is insanely lovely thank you I'm very excited about co-hosting this as well. Oh my God, it's 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 insane. So uh, we will see you next time. We will both see you again on the flip side. Good night.